lie, my name's Jordan. How do you think I think it's determined? Uh, I don't know, I think it depends on the person, but I guess who you are, what you act like, what you do, your personality. Um, I'm Michael Willard. Um, just like how you make yourself known and just who you are as a person and the people around you who know you. All right, I'm Jesse Silva. Identity, uh, I think it's a, a combination of your cultural background as well as influences in society, maybe your friends and things like that, maybe what you see on television, maybe what you aspire to be. I would assume people are, or most people are very eclectic, so they take bits and pieces of what they like and add it to their repertoire, so to speak. Uh, so my name is Avadu. I think identity is determined by how you represent yourself and your background. Stevie Redman. Um, identity is usually typically determined by like the clothes you wear, who you hang out with, your personality, like what what things draw are drawn or what you're drawn to. I'm Mr. Carls, AP English 12 teacher. How do you think identity is determined? I think identity is determined by a myriad of qualities. It's stuff you're born with that you can't control, such as your biological sex, your skin tone, your, where you live, nationality, and so forth. But then it's also determined by events in your life that shape you into who you are, by the way you're treated, by the way you're raised, by your parents, by society. It's a combination of things by your mental health. Kiana. My name's Kiana. Williamson. So. Hi. Hey. <laughs> How do you think identity is determined? I think identity is determined by your race, um, the people you hang out with, your social circle. I think it's identified by how you act and how you behave as well. Hello, I'm Matt Ferry, Mr. Ferry at Osseo High School. How do you think identity is determined? Um, I think it depends on the individual. I think each individual kind of takes in influences from the outside societal pieces as well as some of their internal influences. How did you discover your identity? How did I discover my identity? Yeah, how did you discover your own identity? Uh, I guess growing up throughout the years, you kind of figure out who you are. The experiences that you've done kind of mold your personality and your identity mm. and make you act a certain way. How did you discover your own identity? Um, I don't know. It's just like a lot of things you go through in life. It's like an experience, so it's just like it becomes a part of you and you keep that in your mind at your daily life, you know? Mm -hmm. It keeps you going forward. And yeah. How did you discover your own identity? You know, actually, I think I'm still discovering it because I, I don't, I don't really, I mean, I know for the most part who I am, but there are still things I can do better, things I'd like to add. How did you discover your own identity? Um, I'd say I discovered my identity through my family and how I interact with people. I'd say, like, my friends and people I get along with to shape who I am now. All right, do you think you're still um, discovering your identity? Yeah, I'm still discovering it because I'm going to go to college pretty soon and I'm going to meet a lot of new people too, so see how I am with them and how I interact. How did you discover your own identity? Or are you still discovering it? Um, personally, I'm still working through that. Um, I have most of it down. It's just a few things that are kind of, you know, back and forth. But it's just great friends and people who like the same thing I do and that really formed who I am. I think identity is a process that we have to discover every day because every day is a new day, new people, new experiences so how you react to those situations can be based on what you've learned but there's no consistency so there might be times where you react in a completely different way because something might set you off. I mean I know who I am in a sense but at the same time I don't if that makes sense. But I have discovered my own identity at this point in time. I think it's an ongoing thing where it continually evolves based on your interactions with people outside it as well as you mature and grow and internalize some of those experiences. How do others define you? Um, the girl that sits in the back of the classroom and doesn't talk to anyone, doesn't have friends. Uh, you know, it happens. I hope they define me as like a caring person and very friendly and outgoing and just trying to live life to the fullest and be successful in life. How do people of your own race define you? <laughs> um, I would say some people would be like, you know, like, I have a lot of, like, variety of friends, so some of my friends that are 
black, they'd be like, oh, you know, he's kind of whitewashed. But, you know, for me, I'm just myself. I'm not black. I'm not white. Just, you know, who I am. How do people of other race define you? Um, I think they would see me as, like, a cool, just chill person. That's just how I've always been. Thank you. How do others define you? Well, like I said, I, I would hope that they would define me as intelligent and funny and friendly, but... I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't really, I don't openly ask people, but I don't have a problem with anybody. And that doesn't necessarily mean that they don't have problems with me or don't like certain things about me. But how do others define you? Um, I wouldn't really know how they define me, but I think they define me as probably a eccentric person, not, not a traditional African American male. No. How do others define you? define me? Well, I mean, the fact that I'm open with a lot of people and that I'm just straightforward with them, they really appreciate it. They define me as more of an outgoing person. Like, it doesn't really matter who it is. They just, everybody just, I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> How do you think others define you? Apparently I'm terrifying. Uh, which I think is interesting because I like to say I would define myself as a caring, compassionate person who is respectful of other people, but I apparently terrify a lot of my students. Although they say this, the fear is more out of not wanting to disappoint me, which I guess is good, but um, I'm defined as intelligent, a bit pompous, which I fully acknowledge. Um, sometimes I play it up, sometimes I don't. I think very highly of myself, um, which can be a downfall. Uh, how do, uh, how do others define you? Um, um, I think people define me as how I look. I think they define me as an African-American girl. I'm kind of quiet, shy. Um, yeah. That's, yeah. How do others define you? That's a great question. You'd have to ask that. I'm guessing I get defined as a teacher, as a coach as a brother, as a husband, as a... So it's basically the yes. roles you're playing at that time. Exactly, yes. I feel like people of all races define me the same way. Um, okay. How do people of your own race define you? <sighs> this is interesting because you have both, so... Right, so I can count people from either yeah. side? Yeah, yeah. Uh, That's a hard question. I'll, I'll just I'll, you can stay pretty consistent. I mean, funny, friendly, intelligent, and shy. I mean, I think really shy because I actually don't talk to that many people unless they talk to me. But how do people of your own race define you? They would probably define me as a little different because I'm not the same as everybody else in my race. What is the what is the typical what's the stereotypical for your race? Stereotypical for my race is that we're loud, ignorant, and yeah, that'd be it. And I'm not really loud much, kind of quiet. So, being that you are openly gay, how do people respond to you? Um, with the fact that I'm openly gay, people are actually a lot more accepting because I don't try and hide it, and I also don't hit on every girl I see. Like I'm a respectful person, like. I have, I keep boundaries with a lot of people, there's a lot of things that I don't do to, you know, people who I know don't accept it, and there's pe things that I do to people who I do, who I know that do accept it, and it's just the fact that I'm open, a lot of people are just more accepting of it because I accept myself, and they can feel that often. How do people of your own race define you? They define me as just more of optimistic, I'm outgoing. I mean, they don't really define me as anything different than just kind of crazy, I guess. <laughs> How do you think people of your own race define you? Well, my own race would be the human race, but if you're talking about my socio-political category or categorization as being a white person, mm -hmm. um, I would think they would define me as just a white person. I think we like to think that we don't categorize ourselves, but we categorize everyone else, which is very ironic because with the exception of when we categorize people as white trash or not, we really think that, oh, you're a white person, you're all this way, when in reality, there's so many other factors beyond just the skin tone and the shade of our skin. 
How do people of your own race define you? Oh, well, um, people who I hang out with or African Americans in general, um, I'm not like loud and obnoxious. And I kind of talk, they define me like as an Oreo. It's like white, white girl in a black girl's body. <laughs> yeah. Why do you think they define you that way? I don't, I don't really know. Like, I mean, stereotypically, black people are known as loud and ignorant or obnoxious or they don't talk fully or, you know, they don't say full sentences. I don't know. I talk properly. How do you think people of your own race define you? Um, as white. How do people of other race define you? Like... In your everyday life, when you come across a black person, a white person, a Mexican, or Asian, how do they define you? How do you, like, how is that interaction? Because obviously it'll be different when you're with your Asian friends versus when you're with your black friends versus when you're white with your white friends. So, how is that interaction? You know, it's interesting that you say that because... Uh, I mean, I've I've noticed this. I do act differently around different people, but uh, I mean, I think well, here in English class, I certainly speak more um, proper, I guess you could say, versus when I when I'm with other friends. But I I don't know. It's I don't want to throw any any words out there that might be misconstrued. So. Thank you. Alright. So, with that, how do you think other race define you? Other races may define me as just different, you know, kind of being odd, I guess. How do people of other race define you? Because, yeah, I know you have a variety of different friends. So, how does, how does that, you know? Um, they can define me as annoying and, you know, loud and obnoxious. And some of them... Some of them really like me, like a lot of them don't even care about my race, like and I have so many friends that are, you know, African, Asian, you know, Jewish, all that good stuff, because that's a race. Um, <laughs> uh, they don't really, they, it depends on the person, honestly. I mean, they try to stereotype me, but I'm against the stereotyping. Thank you. Yeah. How do you think people of other race define you? Uh, oh, that's a tricky question. I mean, blacks, whites, Asians. Well, my Mexicans. family's mixed, um, and so as a result, many of my African American students feel I'm a little bit more real. Like I've been called a reverse Oreo, and one of my kids said, "Oh, you know, you're black," and I was like, "Really?" I'm like, "I'm pretty pale. I'm Irish, but uh, just because being black is so much more than just about skin tone, it's about cultural yeah. ethnicity, and because my family is mixed, I'm you know familiar and in touch with that side of my family." And culture and so uh, that perspective. How do you think people of other race define you? Um, quiet, shy, I don't really talk a lot. How do you think people of other race define you? Because I know you have a broad range of friends. As white. As white. Do you think that people define you based on your race? Um, I mean sometimes. Like some people, you know, some people will judge you by like a book by its cover, and some others are just like, not everyone's the same, so some people will judge me by my race, and some people will just judge me by getting to know me first, you know? How do you think your social environment has impacted who you are today? I think if not for my social environment, I would both not be here and I would be dead. Uh, my social environment in secondary school, 7 through 12, would have killed me had it not been for my outside of school social environment which was camp, YMCA camps. Uh, high school at Edina was horrible, horrible. Uh, the bullying, the expectations, um, the way people just were nasty to each other, nasty. And then at this point in my career, uh, 35 years into my life, you know, seeing people on Facebook, they're like, oh, hey, let's be friends. I'm like, you were nasty to me. Um, but it's at camp, my social environment, where you know, finally you were valued for who you were and not because you didn't fit into the social expectations. Uh, that is what made me who I am today, made me want to become a teacher, made me want to become the person I am.
and sing. How has your social life impacted who you are today? Um, the people who I'm around are mostly like myself, so um, I think um, the people who I, I hang out with, I think we build off of each other, you know what I mean? Or, so. How has your social life impacted who you are today? Um, on a variety of levels, based on uh, the different interactions with people, the feedback that I receive, um, both uh, purposeful and, and conscious or subconscious type of, of comments made by people or reactions that I receive from people. Okay. Thank you. How do you define yourself? I define myself... Um, racially African American, spiritually happy, Christian, um, mentally happy. Yeah. I see myself as a caregiver of my students, of the people in my life. I like to take care of the people I care about.